Hi, welcome to Prophetic Utterance International Ministries. I'm your host, Jacqueline King. It's a pleasure to be back again. Amen. I just did a teaching, and so this is really part two of part one teaching. The first teaching was about um, being under spiritual attack and what scriptures to use to pray to bring forth deliverance you know peace from these attacks amen so now i'm doing another teaching from the same person tim wood w-o-o-d and from evergreen church and this is about 10 signs of spiritual attack you need to know when you're underneath spiritual attack you don't need to give room to speculation okay Uh, Spiritual warfare is more common than you might think. We tend to think of demonic oppression as wild and crazy things happening in our lives. But that's not always the case. But actually the reality of spiritual warfare in our lives happens more often than we might think. This is not exhaustive, but it will show you how the enemy attacks. And we do need to know that The enemy attacks us when it comes to who we are in Christ Jesus. So he begins with number one, feeling discouraged, defeated, and depressed. Now, I'm quite sure a lot of people within the past couple of months or years may have been feeling discouraged, defeated, and depressed. That's when things seem hopeless, overwhelming, and burdensome. You may feel an overall sense of disappointment, struggle with a lack of peace, and feeling stress, or feel like giving up. So if you feel these type of emotions, now you know you are under attack, spiritual attack. Number two. Loss of spiritual desire, such as difficulty with prayer, you don't have a prayer life, or staying connected to other believers and maintaining your ministry or your work with God. And that's definitely an area that I can definitely identify with. When it comes to ministry, there's generally a loss of spiritual desire. There's generally for me a time where I have difficulty interceding and praying or staying connecting, connected with other believers. And it does affect my ministry. So that's why it's so important that people understand People in general needs to understand people like me. Even though we do know how to pray, we do have ministries. That doesn't mean we're not under attack. Number three, physical fatigue or sickness or feeling drained or uh, having a lack of energy, no motivation. That is also another sign of the enemy attacking us, especially when you and I both know we had a full night's sleep or he interrupts our rest. He assigns a spirit to us. This is why it's called spiritual attack and the manifestation of the spiritual attacks of being tired, fatigued, sickness, feeling drained, having a lack of energy, no motivation. That lets you know that's the enemy at work. Uh, number four, doubting God's goodness, struggling with trusting God, trusting God to come through for you. You may even feel anger words towards God or feeling angry towards God for letting you down, believing that God is mad or God is punishing you. And usually when I see a person who's journey like this, that's a sign of immaturity for me. It's not that they just, you know, experiencing a spiritual attack, but it also lets me know where they are 
spiritually in their spiritual walk with God, with our Father, you know, their immaturity. So that could be a, a big struggle when it comes to ministering to certain individuals who begins to open the door to the spirit of doubt. Because when there is doubt, there is no faith. And when there's no faith, all there is is nothing but fear. And our Father said, I did not give you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. These are the attributes that Abba Father gives us. But the enemy comes in and steals those qualities from us by making us feel angry, making us feel like God doesn't love us or care for us. You know, these are all spirits of rejection. Number five, negative, disturbing thought life. The enemy attacks your mind. He attacks my mind. The enemy, he, he seeks to do battle with our mind. So our mind becomes what we call a battlefield. We begin to wrestle with our thoughts. So we begin to wrestle. We begin to feel anxious, fearful. We begin to have worrisome thoughts where we over worry or overthink something or we over intellectualize something or we over spiritualize everything, right? Right? Oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. That is not healthy. So many times people will erroneously think that no one cares about them because of this negative thought. They're not going to obviously think, oh, somebody cares about me. Somebody loves me. This is why the enemy attacks the mind. He wants you to feel abandoned. He wants you to feel rejected, neglected. He he wants you to feel unloved, that that no one don't care about you. So if you're going through these uh these type of attributes, that's there there it is. You're under attack. Uh, number six, thinking about going back to your old lifestyle. The enemy places these thoughts in our mind about going back towards our old life rather than moving forward with faith in God. He will lie to you. He will tempt you with the very things you have been delivered from. And that's the thing. A lot of people has not been delivered. But those of us who has had deliverance, this is the very thing the enemy wants us to do. Go back to the things of the past, the former things, and thinking that our life will be better. But it won't. It will be worse. But when the enemy is attacking you this way, and he's putting these thoughts in your mind about going to the things of the past instead of moving forward with God, that's a good indication to let you know you no longer belong to Satan. Because if you belong to him, he wouldn't have to do all of that. But he's attacking you because you don't belong to him. You belong to the Father. And you have to confess that, that Jesus Christ purchased you with the blood of his son Jesus. Amen. He purchased you. I have to speak in the spirit on that because it's so important to understand the purchase, the redemption that Father has already done with the blood of his son Jesus Christ. You have to understand that because once you understand that, that anointing is going to rise up in you and that anointing is going to destroy those yokes and remove the burden in your life. Once you come into a full agreement that you you understand that our father has already paid the price for your soul your salvation deliverance amen so you want to bind the enemy that's attacking your thoughts and making you feel anxious making you feel fearful making you have worryful thoughts you know that's not your father for your father say worry not for tomorrow will take care of itself he said that he that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. But when you begin to feel the cares of the world upon your life, you know that's the enemy that is at work. Number seven, old emotional wounds from the past are resurfaced. You believe you had dealt with that area of pain in your life, only to find out it's cropping back up again in your life. And let me tell you something. That Satan is a legalist, so he will use anything from your past to resurface, especially if you or somebody else, including me, have unforgiveness. That's the only way he can use old emotional wounds from the past in our lives because we're still holding on to the things of the past. 
we have a, we have not forgiven. So if you're that person where the enemy is using stuff from your past, hashing up things from your life that cause so much pain, that's that's an indication right there. I need to repent. I need to forgive this person. Father, teach me to forgive this person. Sometimes the enemy will use stuff that you and I have not shared or talked about to anyone. But God knows all about it. He will use our secrets. So that it begin to beat us up with it and having us feel less than a person. And we begin to have unforgiveness. We start having self-image problems, self-esteem problems because of that. This is where you have to fall out of agreement with the enemy. Renounce those works, those word curses. Bind those spirits because, you know, Satan is very territorial. He would do whatever he can to get you back. So you have to reject him by renouncing and denouncing the works and the plans of the enemy in your life in Jesus' name. Number nine feelings of rejection again belonging loneliness seem to be heightened you feel no one truly understands you see there you go that's the accusation satan comes and he accuses he is a liar so when you start feeling like no one truly understands you and you do not feel like you belong anywhere that's it right there that is an indication another attack by the enemy and you have to go before the father and begin to pray and renounce those feelings say father this is not of you you did not plant this in me you did not give me this spirit so you begin to renounce and fall out of agreement with those words amen number 10 confusion over what you believe is jesus really for me is jesus the only way these and other confusing thoughts are spiritual attacks and that's what it is God is not a God of confusion. Satan is. He brings in wrath. And when he brings in wrath, we know wrath to be anger. When someone is anger and very hostile, they also could promote confusion. And there's a lot of strife. You got to come out of agreement with those things. If you feel you are under a spiritual attack and you and you just don't know what to do, this is the time you have to seek help. The boy, the, the the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given unto you. But you can not obtain the promises of God when the enemy is attacking you because that's the whole key. He's, he comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. And he wants to kill you. If not physically, but spiritually. He wants to kill your purpose, your destiny that our Father has for you. Has for you. So you have to begin to look up and not give up. Those attacks are going to come but you already know God has already given you the victory so you have to reinforce the victory by speaking God's word speak the blood of Jesus soak yourself cover yourself with the blood of the lamb there is power in the blood there's redemption power in the blood he has redeemed us from the curse of the law so all these things the enemy operates against us is our, our curses from the law we're no longer bound by law we are under the grace of god we have a new covenant through his son jesus christ amen so, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we will not give in to the enemy. We will not give in to what he shows or what he tells us, Father God. Father, we, we thank you that he is a liar. He is a deceiver, Father God. We thank you, God, that you, sir, are the God of truth, God. We thank you for your peace and your revelation. Our Father, we thank you that you are the Lord of our salvation. You are the lifter and the covering of our head in a day of battle. I thank you, Father God, that we believe in you. We confess your son, Jesus Christ 
Christ as our Lord, as our Savior. Through Christ Jesus, we now have power. We now have authority according to Luke 10, 19. Father, we can now bind the enemy from operating in our lives according to Matthew 18, verse 18. Father, we could pray corporately by coming in agreement with your will, by speaking your word and having victory by pulling on the whole armor of God according to your word, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 18. Father, I thank you that whoever's listening, they will be delivered they will be set free if they only have faith to believe father god whatever they choose to believe right now god they believe that you will deliver them god they will be delivered from the snare of the fowl from the noise and pestilence they will be delivered from every spiritual opposition that wants to operate against their mind uh, <laughs> against their family against their finances even if, if, if they're married or not married against their womb if she wants a baby Baby, and she can't have a baby but the enemy is always planting these wicked words these tears in their lives father i pray now in the name of jesus christ lord that these tears will be destroyed now every root of destruction every seed of destruction that was rooted father you did not plant that you said that you, your son said that my heavenly father will uproot what he did not plant so father we just thank you god that you are uprooting every seed of destruction in the name of Jesus in the name of your son Jesus we just bless you father God we just thank you for your mercies and your grace God we just thank you for your peace and your loving kindness Abba Father I deny Elohim Jehovah God Yahweh we bless your name to stay Abba Father for you are the God of many names we bless you Abba Father we bless your name God we thank you God we bless you God we just thank Thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who restores. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Makedisha. You are the God of that is the God of our righteousness. You are the God who is our shalom. You, we thank you right now, God. We thank you. And we bless every person who has heard this teaching that they will be delivered completely and set free. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. And I'm your host, Jacqueline King. Prophetic Utterance International Ministries. God bless you.